Section 1 of 41 Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 41 Poems by E. E. Cummings. The Sky Was. The Sky Was. Candy Luminous. Edible Spry. Pinks Shy. Lemons Greens. Cool chalk olets under a locomotive spouting violets. End of poem. Of My by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. Of my soul a street is, prettiness, pick abian, trick, trick, click, flicker, garnished of stark Picasso, throttling trees. Hither my soul repairs herself with prisms of sharp mind and Matisse rhythms to juggle Kandinsky goldfish away from the gripping gigantic Muscles of Cezanne's logic. Oh, ho! A street there is where strange birds purr. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Life is Quite Through With by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith When life is quite through with, And leaves say, alas, Much is to do for the swallow That closes a flight in the blue. When love's had his tears out, Perhaps shall pass a million years, While a bee dozes on the poppies, the deers, When all's done and said, and under the grass lies her head by oaks and roses deliberated. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Into the Smiting by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. Into the Smiting Sky. Tense with blending, the tree leaps a stiffened, exquisite eye. Wait the sweet annihilation of swift flesh. I make me stern against your charming strength. O oh, haste, annihilator, drawing into you my enchanting leaves. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Where's Madge, Then? by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. Where's Madge, Then? Madge and her men, Buried with Alice in her hair. But if you ask the rain, He'll not tell where. Beauty makes terms with time and his worms, When loveliness says sweetly yes to wind and cold, And how much earth is Madge worth? Inquire of the flower that sways in the autumn, She will never guess, but I know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After Five by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith After five times the poem of thy remembrance Surprises with refrain Of unreasoning summer that by responding Ways cloaked with renewal, my body turns toward thee again. For the stars have been finished in the nobler trees, And 
The language of leaves repeats eventual perfection, while east deserves of dawn. I lie at length, breathing with shut eyes. The sweet earth where thou liest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Between Green Mountains by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Between green mountains Sings the flinger of fire Beyond red rivers of fair perpetual feet The sinuous riot The flashing bacchant Parted petaled mouth Face delirious, indivisible grace of dancing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Rain by E. E. Cummings In the rain, darkness, the sunset being sheathed, I sit and think of you, the holy city which is your face, your little cheeks, the streets of smiles, your eyes half thrush, half angel, and your drowsy lips where float flowers of kiss, and there is the sweet shy pirouette of your hair, and then your dance-song soul. Rarely beloved, a single star is uttered, and I think of you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lady of Silence by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Lady of silence, from the winsome cage of thy body, rose through the sensible night a quick bird. Tenderly upon the dark's prodigious face, thy voice, scattering perfume-gifted wings, suddenly escorts with feet sun sheer the smarting beauty of dawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hills by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org The hills, like poets, put on purple thought Against the magnificent clamor of day tortured in gold, which presently crumpled collapses, exhaling a red soul into the dark, so dun-eyed master enter the sweet gates of my heart, and take the rose, which perfect is, with killing hands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Will Wade Out Till My Thighs Are Steeped in Burning Flowers by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org I will wade out till my thighs are steeped in burning flowers. I will take the sun in my mouth and leap into the ripe air, alive with closed eyes to dash against darkness in the sleeping curves of my body, shall enter fingers of smooth mastery. With chasteness of sea-girls will I complete the mystery of my flesh. I will rise after a thousand years, lipping flowers, and set my teeth in the silver of the moon. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Cruelly Love by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Cruelly love, walk the autumn long, the last flower in whose hair thy lips are cold with songs, for which is first to wither, to pass, shallowness of sunlight falls, and cruelly across the grass comes the moon. Love, walk the autumn, love, for the last flower in the hair withers. Thy hair is a cold with dreams. Love, thou art frail. Walk the longness of autumn, smile dustily to the people, for winter who crookedly care. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Why Did You Go? by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Why did you go, little forepaws? You forgot to shut your big eyes. Where did you go? Like little kittens are all the leaves which open in the rain. Little kittens who are called spring is what we stroke, maybe asleep. Do you know? Or maybe did something go away ever so quietly when we weren't looking? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little Tree by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Little Tree, Little Silent Christmas Tree. You are so little, you're more like a flower. Who found you in the green forest, and were you very sorry to come away? See, I will comfort you because you smell so sweetly. I will kiss your cool bark and hug you safe and tight, just as your mother would, only don't be afraid. Look, the spangles that sleep all the year in a dark box, dreaming of being taken out and allowed to shine. The balls, the chains red and gold, the fluffy threads. Put up your little arms, and I'll give them all to you to hold. Every finger shall have its ring, and there won't be a single place dark or unhappy. Then, when you're quite dressed, you'll stand in the window for everyone to see, and how they'll stare. Oh, but you'll be very proud, and my little sister and I will take hands, and, looking up at our beautiful tree, we'll dance and sing. No, well... No well. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Conversation with my friend is particularly by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org. Conversation with my friend is particularly to enjoy the composed sudden body atop which always quivers the electric distinct face haughtily vital clinched in a swoon of synopsis despite a sadistic modesty his mind is seen frequently fingering the exact beads of a faultless languor when invisibly consult with some delicious image the a little strolling lips and eyes inwardly crisping for my friend Feeling is the sacred and agonizing proximity to its desire of a doomed, impetuous, acute sentience, whose white-hot lips, however, suddenly approached, may never quite taste the wine which their nearness evaporates. To think is the slippery contours of a vase inexpressibly fragile. It is for the brain irrevocably frigid to touch a merest shape which, however slenderly by it caressed, will explode and spill the immediate imperceptible content. My friend's being, out of the spontaneous, clumsy, trivial, acrobatic, edgeless gesture of existence, continually whittles keen, careful, futile flowers. Isolating with perpetually meticulous concupiscence the bright, large, undeniable disease of life, himself occasionally contrives an unreal, precise, intrinsic, fragment of actuality, an orchid whose velocity is sculptural.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One April Dusk, the by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. One April Dusk, the sallow street lamps were turning snowy against a west of robin's egg blue when I entered a mad street whose mouth dripped with slaver of spring, chased two flights of squirrel stairs into a mid-Victorian attic which is known as Oparthenon, and having ordered Yarty from Nico, settled my feet on the ceiling, inhaling six divine inches of haramina, in the thick of the snicker of cards and smack of backgammon boards, I was aware of an entirely dirty circle of habitués, their faces like cigarette butts, chewed with disdain, led by a jumpy tramp who played each card as if it were a thunderbolt, red-hot, peeling off huge slabs of a fuzzy language with the aid of an exclamatory toothpick. And who may that be, I said, exhaling into an eternity, as Nico laid before me bread more downy than street lamps upon an almost clean plate. Achilles, said Nico, and did you perhaps wish also shish kebab? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Picasso by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Picasso, you give us things which bulge, grunting lungs pumped full of sharp, thick mind. You make us shrill presents, always shut in this sumptuous screech of simplicity. Out of the black, unbunged something gushes vaguely a squeak of planes, or, between squeals of nothing, grabbed with circular, shrieking tightness, Solid screams whisper. Lumberman of the distinct, Your brain's axe only chops Hugest inherent trees of ego, From whose living and biggest bodies, Lopped of every prettiness, You hew form truly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. THE SKINNY VOICE by E. E. Cummings The skinny voice of the leather-faced woman with the crimson nose and coquettishly cocked bonnet, having ceased, the captain announces that as three dimes, seven nickels, and ten pennies have been deposited upon the drum, there is need of just twenty-five cents, dear friends, to make it an even dollar whereupon the divine average who was attracted by the inspired sister's howling moves off. Will anyone tell him why he should blow two bits for the coming of Christ Jesus? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation point. Nix, kid. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As usual, I did not find him in cafes, the more dissolute. By E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. As usual, I did not find him in cafes, the more dissolute atmosphere of a street superimposing a numbing imperfectness upon such peregrinations as twilight spontaneously by inevitable tiredness of flanging shop-girls impersonally affords, furnished a soft first clue to his innumerable whereabouts. Violet logic of annihilation demonstrating from Woolworthian pinnacle, a capable millennium of faces meshing with my curiously instant appreciation, exposed his hibernative contours. Amiable immensity impeccably extending the courtesy of five o'clock became the omen of his presence. It was spring, by the way, in the soiled canary cage of largest existence, when he would extemporize the innovation of muscularity upon the most crimson assistance of my comforter, 
a click of deciding glory inflicted to the negative silence, that primeval exposure whose electric solidity remembers some accurately profuse scratchings in a recently discovered cave, the corrals of geometrical putrescence whereto my invariably commendable room has been forever subject his earliest word wheeled out on the sunny dump of oblivion. A tiny dust finally arising at the integration of my soul, I coughed naturally. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It's Just Like a Coffins by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. It's just like a coffin's inside when you die, pretentious and shiny and not too wide. Dear God, there's a portrait over the door very notable of the Sultan's nose, pullable and rosy, flanked by the scrumptious Magdalene of Who Is It and Madame Something by Gainsborough. Just the playthings for dust, Miss Pa. Effendi drifts between tables like an old leaf between toadstools. He is the cheerfulest of men. His peaked head smolders like a new turd in April. His legs are brittle and small, his feet large and fragile. His queer hands twitter before him like foolish butterflies. He is the most courteous of men. Should you remark the walls have been repapered, he will nod, like Buddha, or answer modestly, I am dying. So let us come in together and drink coffee covered with froth, half mud and not too sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Mind Is by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. My mind is a big hunk of irrevocable nothing, which touch and taste and smell and hearing and sight keep hitting and chipping with sharp fatal tools. In an agony of sensual chisels I perform squirms of chrome and execute strides of cobalt. Nevertheless, I feel that I cleverly am being altered, that I slightly am becoming something a little different, in fact, myself. Hereupon helpless, I utter lilac shrieks and scarlet bellowings. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Five by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Five derbies with men in them smoke Helmar cigarettes. Two play backgammon, three watch. A has gold teeth, B pink suspenders, C reads Atlantis. X and Y play. B cries, Effendi, uh, coffee, uh, enter paper boy. C buys Boston American. Exit Paperboy. A finishes Helmar. Lights another. X and Y play. Effendi approaches. Sets down coffee. Withdraws. A and C discuss news in Turkish. X and Y play. B spits. X and Y play. B starts Armenian record. Phonograph is running down. Phonograph stops. B swears in Persian at phonograph. X wins. Exit AX by C. Good night, Defendi. Five men in derbies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Ferocious Phenomena of Five O'Clock I Find Myself by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org 
at the ferocious phenomenon of five o'clock, I find myself gently decomposing in the mouth of New York. Between its supple financial teeth, deliriously sprouting from complacent gums, a morsel prettily wanders, buoyed by the murderous saliva of industry. The morsel is I. Vast cheeks enclose me. A gigantic uvula with imperceptible gesticulations threatens the tubular downward blackness, occasionally from which, detaching itself, bumps clumsily into the throat. A meticulous vulgarity, a sodden fastidious normal explosion, a square murmur, a winsome flatulence. In the soft midst of the tongue sits the Woolworth building, a serene pastel-shaped insipid kinesis of frail swooping lozenge, a rug-like sentience whose papilla expertly drink the docile perpendicular taste of this squirming cube of undiminished silence, supports while devouring the firm tumult of exquisitely insecure sharp algebraic music, for the first time in sorting from this vast nonchalant inward walk of volume, the flat, minute gallop of careful hugeness, I am conjugated by the sensual mysticism of entire vertical being. I am skillfully construed by a delicately experimenting colossus whose irrefutable spiral antics involve me with the soothings of plastic hypnotism. I am accurately parsed by this gorgeous rush of upward lips. Cleverly. Perching on the sudden extremity of one immense tooth, myself surveys safely the complete, important, profane, frantic, inconsequential, gastronomic mystery of mysteries. Life. Far below myself the lunging leer of horizontal, large, distinct ecstasy wags and rages, laughters, jostle, grins, nudge, smiles, push, deep into the edgeless, gloaming, gladness hammers, incessant, putrid spikes of madness. At myself's height, these various innocent ferocities are superseded by the soul-prostituted ferocity of silence. It is still five o'clock. I stare only always into the tremendous canyon, the tremendous canyon always only exhales a climbing dark exact walloping human noise of digestible millions whose rich slovenly obscene procession always floats through the thin amorous enormous only lips of the evening and it is five o'clock in the oblong air from which a singular ribbon of common sunset is hanging snow speaks slowly End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. Earth Like a Tipsy by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Earth like a tipsy biddy with an old mop Punching underneath conventions exposes Hidden obscenities nudging into neglected sentiments Brings to light dusty heroisms and finally colliding with the most expensive furniture upsets a crucifix which smashes into several pieces and is hurriedly picked up and thrown on the ash heap where lies what was once the discobolus of one myron end of poem this recording is in the public domain Humanity, I Love You by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Humanity, I Love You Because you would rather black the boots of success than inquire whose soul dangles from his watch chain, which would be embarrassing for both parties, and because you unflinchingly applaud all songs containing the words country home and mother when sung at the old Howard. Humanity, I love you, because when you're hard up, you pawn your intelligence to buy a drink, and when your flush pride keeps you from the pawn shop, and because you are continually committing nuisances, but more especially in your own house. Humanity, I love you, 
because you are perpetually putting the secret of life in your pants and forgetting it's there and sitting down on it, and because you are forever making poems in the lap of death. Humanity, I hate you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Learned Darkness from Our Searched World by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org When learned darkness from our searched world Restest the rare unwisdom of thy eyes, If thy two hands, flowers of silence, Curled upon a thought, To rapture should surprise my soul Slowly, which on thy beauty dreamest, Proud through the cold perfect night, whisperless to mark how that asleep whitely thou seemest whose lips the whole of life almost do guess if god should send the morning and before my doubting window leave softly to stir of thoughtful trees whom night hath pondered o'er and frailties of dimension to occur about us and birds known scarcely to sing heart Shall thou bear the marvel of this thing? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O Thou to Whom the Musical White Spring by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org O Thou to Whom the Musical White Spring Offers her lily indistinguishable taught by thy tremulous grace bravely to fling implacable death's mysteriously sable robe from her redolent shoulders. Thou from whose feet reincarnate song suddenly leaping, flame-flung, mounts inimitably to lose herself where the wet stars softly are keeping their exquisite dreams. O oh, love, upon thy dim shrine of intangible commemoration, from whose faint close as some grave languorous hymn, pledged to illimitable dissipation, unhurried clouds of incense fleetly roll, I spill my bright incalculable soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When unto nights of autumn do complain, by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. When unto nights of autumn do complain, Earth's ghastlier trees by whom time measured Is when frost to dance maketh the sagest pain Of littler huts with peerless fantasies, Or the unlovely longness of the year, Droops with things dead athwart the narrowing hours And hope, by cold espoused unto fear, in dreadful corners hideously cowers. I do excuse me, love, to death and time, Storms and rough cold, Winds menace and leafs From the impressed fingers of sublime. Grieving, memory of that loveliness Receiving the image my proud heart Cherished as fair. The child head poised with the serious hair, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is the Garden, Colors Come and Go by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. This is the Garden, Colors Come and Go, frail azures fluttering from night's outer wing, strong, silent green serenely lingering absolute lights like baths of golden snow. This is the garden, pursed lips do blow upon cool flutes within wide glooms and sing of harps celestial to the quivering string, invisible faces hauntingly and slow. This is the garden. Time shall surely reap, and on death's blade lie many a flower curled, in other lands where other songs be sung, yet stand they here enraptured, as among the slow deep trees perpetual of sleep 
Some silver-fingered fountain steals the world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thou in whose sword great story shine the deeds by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Thou in whose sword great story shine the deeds of history, her heroes, sounds the tread of those vast armies of the marching dead, with standards and the neighing of great steeds moving to war across the smiling meads. Thou, by whose page we break the precious bread of dear communion with the past, and wed to valor, battle with heroic breeds. Thou, Froissart, for that thou didst love the pen, while others wrote in steel, accept all praise of after ages, and of hungering days for whom the old glories move, the old trumpets cry, who gavest as one of those immortal men his life, that his fair city might not die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Proficient Poison of Sure Sleep by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org when the proficient poison of sure sleep bereaves us of our slow tranquillities, and he without whose favor nothing is, being of men called love, upward doth leap from the mute hugeness of depriving deep, with thunder of those hungering wings of his, into the lucent and large seigneuries. I shall not smile, beloved, I shall not weep. When from the less than whiteness of thy face, Whose eyes inherit vacancy, Will time extract his inconsiderable doom, When these thy lips beautifully embrace nothing, And when thy bashful hands assume silence Beyond the mystery of rhyme. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. And what were roses? Perfume? For I do. By E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org. And what were roses? Perfume? For I do forget. Or mere music mounting unsurely twilight. But here were something more maturely childish, more beautiful almost than you. Yet if not flower, tell me softly who be these haunters of dreams, always demurely half-smiling from cool faces, moving purely with muted step, yet somewhat proudly too. Are they not ladies, Ladies of my dreams, justly touching roses, their fingers whitely live by. Or better, queens, queens laughing lightly crowned with far colors, thinking very much of nothing, and whom dawn loves most to touch, wishing by willows, bending upon streams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Come Nothing to My Comparable Soul by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org Come nothing to my comparable soul Which with existence has conversed in vain. O oh, scrupulously take thy trivial toll For whose cool feet this frantic heart is fain. Try me with thy perfumes which have seduced the mightier nostrils of the fervent dead. Feed with felicities me, worm perused, by whom the hungering mouth of time is fed. And if I like not what thou givest me, to him let me complain, whose seat is where revolving planets struggle to be free with the astounding everlasting air. But if I like, 
I'll take between thy hands what no man feels, no woman understands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When My Sensational Moments Are No More by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org When my sensational moments are no more Unjoyously bullied of vilest mind And sweet uncaring earth by thoughtful war Heaped wholly with high wilt of human rind When over hate has triumphed darkly love and the small spiritual cry of spring utters a striving flower, just where strove the droll god-beasts, do thou distinctly bring thy footstep, and the rushing of thy deep hair, and the smiting smile didst love to use in other days, drawing my mees from sleep, whose stranger dreams thy strangeness must abuse. Time being not for us, purple roses were sweeter to thee, perchance to me deeper. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Have Seen Her A Stealthily Frail by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org I have seen her, a stealthily frail flower, walking with its fellows in the death of light, against whose enormous curve of flesh exactly cubes of tiny fragrance try. I have watched certain petals rapidly wish in the corners of her youth, whom, fiercely shy and gently brutal, the prettiest wrath of Blossoms dishevelling made a pale fracas upon the accurate moon. Across the important gardens, her body will come toward me with its hurting sexual smell of lilies. Beyond night's silken immense swoon, the moon is like a floating silver hell, a song of adolescent ivory. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Who's Most Afraid of Death, Thou Art of Him by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org Who's most afraid of death, Thou art of him utterly afraid. I love of thee, beloved, This and truly I would be near. When his scythe takes crisply the whim of thy smoothness, And mark the fainting murdered petals with the caving stem, But of all most would I be one of them, Round the hurt heart which do so frailly cling, I who am but imperfect in my fear, Or with thy mind against my mind, to hear nearing our hearts irrevocable play through the mysterious high futile day, an enormous stride, and drawing thy mouth toward my mouth, steer our lost bodies carefully downward. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Perhaps it is to feel strike by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. Perhaps it is to feel strike the silverfish of her nakedness, with fins sharply pleasant. My youth has travelled toward her these years, or to snare the timid like of her mind to my mind that I am come by little countries to the yes. Of her youth. And if somebody hears what I say, let him be pitiful, because I've travelled all alone through the forest of wonderful, and that my feet have surely known the furious ways and the peaceful, and because she is beautiful. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. When I am in Boston, I do not speak. By E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. When I am in Boston, I do not speak, and I sit in the click of ivory balls, noting flies which jerk upon the weak color of tablecloths, the electric when in doubt by of, but a roof hugs whom, as the August evening mauls Kneeland, and a waiter cleverly lugs indigestible honey cake to men, one perfectly smooth coffee, tasting of Hella's, I drink, or sometimes two, remarking cries of Poklava Mia, very occasionally three, and I gaze on the cinder-colored little Megarinikon Senodokyonipino. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Will Suddenly Trees Leap from Winter and Will by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org Will suddenly trees leap from winter, and will the stabbing music of your white youth wounded by my arm's boldness, say a twilight lifting the fragile skill of new leaves' voices and sharp lips of spring simply joining with the wonderless city's sublime, cheap, distinct mouth, do the exact, human, comely thing? Or will the fleshless moments go and go across this dirtied pane where softly prays the gray and perpendicular always? Or possibly there drift a pulseless blur of paleness, the unswift mouths of snow insignificantly whisper. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Fragrant Sag of Fruit Distinctly Grouped by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org A fragrant sag of fruit distinctly grouped I have not eaten peppers for a week. On this street the houses immensely speak. It is nine minutes past six. The well-fed L's immaculate roar looped straightness into neatest distance. A new curve of children gladly cricks where a hurdy-gurdy accurately pants. And pompous ancient Jews obscurely twitch through the bumping team of grand. A nudging froth of faces clogs second as Mrs. Something Witch, with flesh like an old toy balloon, heavily swims to Strunsky's. Manya's mouth eats tangerines looking at the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By God, I want above fourteenth. By E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org. By God, I want above fourteenth, fifth's deep purring biceps, the mystic screech of Broadway, the trivial stink of rich, frail, firm, asinine life. I pant for what's below, the singer, wall. I want the perpendicular lips, the insane teeth, the vertical grin. Give me the square in spring, the little barbarous Greenwich-perfumed fake, and most, the futile fooling labyrinth where noisy colors stroll, and the baboon sniggering insipidities while I sit sipping singular anisettes as one opaque big girl jiggles thickly hips to the canoon, but Hassan chuckles seeing the Greeks breathe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of 41 Poems by E. E. Cummings.